Hi, and welcome to the Learn to Code by Writing Space Invaders course. Over the next 20 lessons or so, I am going to show you how to write your own programs. Don't worry if you've never written a single line of code before. We'll go through everything together right from the very start. Writing your own code is great fun, but sometimes learning to program can be a bit tedious. You end up writing lots of little programs that show off a coding feature, but don't actually do anything interesting. So in this course, uh, we're going to turn all of that right round. We're going to start by writing a game, and we're going to learn all of the programming techniques as we go along and as we need them. Each lesson is going to be a YouTube video, but don't forget to visit the course website for more information and to download all of the code we're using in each lesson. I'm going to put a link in the description below if you're on YouTube at the moment. Also, don't forget to like and to subscribe to my channel um, so that you get um, notifications of all the new lessons as they arrive, as well as all the other videos that we'll be covering uh, and for programming, electronics and other gaming ideas. So let's get started on programming. To begin with then, uh, we're going to need a program that's going to let us write our own games. And the one we're going to use is called Tick80. Uh, Tick80 is a full games development system, but it's got all of the complicated bits that we don't need stripped away so that we can really focus on learning to code and writing great games um, and doing that as easily as possible. So let's see how we can get hold of Tick80. Tick80 is a free download. So if you open up your web browser, so I've got mine open here, and actually I'm on the website that goes with all of the courses. Um, it's bytesandbits.co.uk. If you haven't been here already, it's worth popping out here because um, it's got all the information you need for all of the courses. If you go to the Learn to Code section, you'll see here we have the various courses listed. So the start here tab is really what we're working through at the moment in, in how to get hold of Tick80 and, and our games development system. And the course that we're currently looking at is the Space Invaders game here. So if you click on that for the course page, you'll see we have a page here and it starts off then showing you the actual game itself. Uh, and we can actually play this if you click in with a Z and you've got left and right arrows and then the Z that will fire. And you can see we, that is, this is actually the finished game that we're going to be working on. And as you scroll down a bit further, you'll see then we have all of the lessons listed out so you can start working your way through that and learning how to put this all together. But what we're going to do is we're going to go and get hold of Tick80. So we need to type the address into our address bar and it's tick.computer. And if we go there, you'll see we have the website for Tick80. And there's lots of information in here. But what we're really looking at the moment then is to go to the Create tab where we can actually download the software. If we scroll down a bit, you can see we have various downloads depending on what type of computer you're using. So I'm using a Windows computer, so I'm going to download this zip file. So if I click on that and download that into my download folder, now, depending on what browser you're using, it will come up in different ways, but I now have my Tickety software here, and I can just click on this and open up the folder where it is. If I open up this zip file, so a zip file just simply contains other files, if I open that up, you'll see in there we have the program file itself. And if you're using um, Linux or um, a Mac, it's a very, very similar process. So this file here, we just simply need to put that somewhere sensible where we can find it. And the easiest thing to do is to simply drop it onto our desktop. So if I drop it on my desktop and then close that up, and if I just minimize the Tick80 website for a second, you'll see then that we have our Tick80.exe file sitting in there. If I double click that, we'll get the Tick80 program opening up and we should get to this screen. 
And now we have got everything we need to start programming. Um, sometimes you'll find that your computer may complain about Tick80 um, when you first try to open it, um, saying that it doesn't recognize the program at all. Um, it is all perfectly safe, so please do just um, allow the program to run and then everything should be fine. So now that we've got Tick80 up and running, let's just have a quick look around the system so we can familiarize ourselves with the bits we're gonna be using. So we can make the window just a little bit bigger by just maximizing it, moving it around and just changing the size of it. So we can see things a bit better now. We're into what's known as the Tick80 console at the moment. And this is really where we can load and save our games. So one of the commands which we can use here is, is ls, which will list out all the files we currently have in our system. And again, this is my development um, version. So again, I've got a lot more files in here than you'll see when you get in. Um, but if I go into our course one, so again, I can change directory to course one. Uh, and don't worry about remembering all these commands because as we go through the course, uh, we'll be going over each one as we need to use it. But just at the moment, I can use this to navigate through my system. And I can see in there, I can list out the files. And if I then want to load in a program, I can load in lesson 21, which is the, the finished version of the code, and I can load that in. So you can see now that it's, it's all loaded in there. And if I want to actually run that program, I just type in run, and you can see we've now got our, our Space Invaders program running. If I press escape, that will stop the program running and take me back to my console screen. When I'm in the console screen, if I press the escape key on my keyboard again, it will take me into my development system. So at the moment, I'm in what's known as the code editor. So if you look up the top here, you can see it says code editor. And this is the code for the game that we're just going, we're going to be writing over this um, lesson. So you can see here, um, by the time we finished, we've got quite a lot of code in our system. So it is, is a reasonably complicated um, piece of software. But again, don't, don't worry, because every single step we'll be going through, um, and I'll be taking you through exactly what to do, and how it works, and what it all means. But looking at our Tick80 again, so we have a code editor where we type in our code. You can see here that we have got that listed in here. Important buttons on this one, um, we have an F up here which changes the font. Because some of our lines here, if we scroll down, you can see they start to go off the end of the screen, like these ones. If we use the F key, that will give us a slightly smaller font where we can see longer lines. We then have a number of other parts to our development system. So we're going to be using things called sprites, which are the little characters, so the player ship and the aliens and so on. So if we go into the sprite editor by clicking this little tab, you can see here that these are all the pictures of the aliens. So we get a, a, an editor here and then a little preview of all the different sprites that we've been using. And you can see here the sprites that make the aliens look like they're moving. And then we have the explosion sprites and so on. We have a map editor, which we're not going to be using in this particular game. And then we have some sound effects. Uh, and again, we can, we can play with those once we get to the bit of code that we're looking at. But for the moment then, that's just a very quick overview of Tick80. If we want to get out of the development system and back to our console, again, we press the escape key, and then we're back to here, and again, we will then run our code from here again and escape. Okay, so that's really just a quick overview of how we move around inside Tegeti. But as I say, don't worry if that's not sunk in just yet, because everything we're doing here, I will do it step by step in the actual lessons themselves. The last thing then before we make a start on lesson one is a couple of tips on how to work through the various lessons as you're as you're going along. So if I jump across to the uh, website, um, you'll see that every lesson has a page dedicated to it. So this is the page for lesson one, which is our work on variables. 
you'll find the video there, but you'll also find some notes underneath that. Um, and one of the parts of the notes will be a listing or, or a, a completely um, typed out version of the code that you're using in that lesson. This is really for your reference. Um, so please don't just simply copy this in and paste it into your TIC80 and go from there. Really the way the lessons are designed to work is for you to follow me through as we're doing it. So at various points in the code, I'll be, I'll be talking through and describing what we're doing and why we're doing it, but also then typing out the code itself. Um, and if, if I show you lesson one, you, you'll see what I mean assign a new value to the variable count. So we're going to say count, assign it the value of what it currently is plus one. So another and what I suggest you do is you have a look through the video and see what we're typing in and then type it in as we're going along so that you get experience of actually putting the code into tick 80. And you'll also then see us building up the program because we don't, we don't always get to the final listing that we see up down here. Again, that, that's, that's the end of the lesson, that listing. But quite often, we're going to be doing quite a few different things during the course of the lesson, gradually building up towards that final version. So please do go through, follow me through, type it in yourselves and run through all the exercises. So that's everything I need to go over in this introductory lesson. So let's get started on lesson one, where we'll see how we can use the computer's memory to store information that our program needs as it runs through running our computer program. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.